we're calling this um, meeting to order and welcome councillors. Thank you, appreciate you had a very busy morning. Um, and we also have, no we don't, have our two youth councillors, Jenna and Nico. Maybe they will arrive later or... Appreciate that, thank you. So, um, apologies. We have um, Councillor Barker is away in council business and Councillor Rutledge. If I move it for those, thank you. Gail, thank you, um, Rachel. All those in favour? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Done. Um, Conscious we're live streaming and everyone will know that they need to turn on their microphones when they're talking. <laughs> Thank you. Information of the order of business. Um, nothing's changed. The public forum we had was taken this morning um, while we were public excluded. Just need to note that. Any interest that anyone need? Sorry? Mr Chair, just, I'm just in terms of that public forum, um, and I um, obviously I had a meeting this morning um, that wasn't public excluded, but I wasn't aware that we had some of these people timetabled for 11 o'clock, so um, we adjourned that meeting so we could have a briefing from them, and which was public. I just wonder whether it would be appropriate, um, just for the record, whether we actually entered into the record at this meeting the um, presentation, the document that they gave. Would that, yes, so we can table that now and have that accepted. Uh, thank you for that um, suggestion, um, uh, Marys. And um, the document was here and the presentation was great. I would like to record that in um, our minutes. Uh, second by that. Do we need one? Thanks, Gail. Uh, so the rest of the items are the same as the agenda. All those in favour? Aye. We just reminder that we need to keep our interest registers up to date. No interest <coughs> need to be declared for this meeting. Confirmation of the minutes for the meeting Thursday the 30th of November. Do we have any, can I just go through those pages, uh, page uh, six on your agenda, no page seven, uh, page eight, page nine, Page 10, page 11. Thank you. All those in favour? Aye. The status report. Okay, I need to ask. Okay. Sorry, I had to ask all in favour and then any against? No? Carried. 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 Mr Chair, you might pay to leave your microphone on actually, Bill. Um, can we have a quick update? Thank you. Mr Chair. Um, the, the Cyclift Society have been um, working on the stage, uh, stage one report which uh, was, was um, what the first 50,000 of Council's funding was for. It was to get the work up the, the, the investment proposal effectively. 
effectively uh, recheck the economic um, information and the assumptions that were, were in there and also um, get further clarity on the feasibility of, of the route options and, and, the, and, and the ability to actually build uh, the, the gondola along the routes that they'd identified. Um, they are almost at the end of that, that work and, and it has taken some, some time longer than, um, than they had hoped. Um, the key reason is around the, the financial um, assumptions. So they have uh, engaged with select contracts who have, um, who have experience in working with uh, cycle gondolas and, and established the feasibility and a preferred route. Um, they are, um, the society are just wanting to double check the financial assumptions that, that sit behind some of the forecasts. Uh, and I've also asked them to ensure that the information that Council has um, is, is, is about to be brought forward to, to Council in relation to the barrel report on mountain bike, uh, the economic impact of mountain biking should be consistent with the assumptions that they are making in, in that report. So, so that is on, ongoing and, and should be completed soon and they will come back to the Governance Committee to report. In the meantime, I have organised a, a meeting with the Mayor and representatives of the Cycle Lift Society because they have, um, they have identified some opportunities which may result in them taking a different option in terms of structural uh, matters in the future. Uh, and I think it would it, it's, it will be useful for the mayor to, to hear hear that in order to understand and there's some confidential uh, um, elements to that as well. So um, in summary, we, we, the project is still moving forward, albeit um, somewhat slowly at this stage, but the intention would be to report, report back to governance committee um, at the, the, the earliest opportunity. Uh, no. Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Officer Ward. How are they managing with their finances at the moment? We gave them, I think, originally 50,000, um, what I like to call seed money, for an initiative and an idea they want to promote. Uh, how much of that have they used so far? Because last time they were before us, they said 15,000. <coughs> have they spent the full amount now? Uh, they have spent the full amount and, and something uh, just um, just going over that. Uh, and they have got a, a potential uh, commercial partner who is interested in putting some money into into the project. Um, Council's second uh, tranche of $50,000 was um, subject to them raising uh, additional funding. And I've, I've said to them that that cannot be used to make up any shortfall for the stage one report. Um, that they need to find the, the money for that to complete that stage one report. Yep. I see two questions there. One is how much over, but that does get my mind thinking that have we got a degree of flexibility or could we have a degree of flexibility in respect of that last 50,000? I'm thinking more in smaller, making it available to them in smaller increments. You know, 10, um, 20,000 and they equal that? So through the Chair, I think that we, we could have some flexibility, but uh, the second 50,000 really was contingent on them completing this first piece of work. And, and they haven't yet completed that first piece of work. And, and I would expect that they would have to report that back to, to, the, to the Governance Committee. Uh, and there could be a discussion at that stage about how the, the second tranche, if, if it is going to be released, would be released. Sorry, uh, through the chair, uh, it is only a few thousand over. It's not not a huge amount. Any other questions? Just one for myself, um, Mr. Ward. Do we have a um, a timeline that they're going to come back to us? Um, I would be loath to put a timeline on it, given that they have um, they probably missed the last two 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 deadlines. Um, uh, they understand that the, the money is in this financial year, the second $50,000, and so they need to do some work um, uh, fairly quickly in order to, to have the discussion about releasing that funding. Thank you. Yeah. Um, can we uh, receive the status report? Thank you, Gail. Mel, well, thank you, Mel. Um, all those in favour? Against? Right. Carried? Sorry, uh, Chairman's report. There's no um, written Chairman's report as Chairperson Ian Barker is away on council business in Wellington. Can we have that noted?
Thank you. Item 8, Council Submission on Overseas Investment Bill. Uh, we have um, Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Before I start, I thought it might be a good opportunity to invite my new acting manager, the new Nikki McDonald, down to say hello, uh, Mark Tregurthy, if you are okay with that. Mark, of course, many of you will know Mark because he worked for Nelson City for 10 years yeah. uh, and has been away for seven, seven years. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> A brief stint with TDC. <laughs> and overseas. So, um, yeah, as uh, expand on um, acting in, in Nikki's role and um, uh, just working with the staff on the consultation document and the supporting um, policies and the like for the long-term plan. It's going well, but busy. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki enjoys tramping and all things outdoors. Do you enjoy those too? I do when there's time, yes. <laughs> So with your permission, well, right. So this report in front of you is asking you to accept the, um, for retrospective approval, the submission on the Overseas Investment Amendment Bill. Uh, the bill was introduced as part of the government's first 100 days in office and really to address housing affordability and supply, and it was, an, uh, it's one part of a suite of um, approaches that they were introducing. The submission made by Nelson City covers off three areas in support of and in support of Queenstown Lakes submission. Uh, really, but the first point is probably the most significant point, which was that the the proposed amendment has been had a very short uh, preparation time to be brought for consideration, and uh, we were concerned about that. Um, and we would like to feel fully comfort confident that the select committee has all the information they need, including information on any um, unintended consequences that might have occur out of the proposed uh, amendment. Uh, secondly, we were concerned about the that the submission period time fell over that Christmas break. Um, the select committee obviously also, uh, we're concerned about that because they extended the submission period for another four weeks, so that's been somewhat mitigated. And the third point is really a point as uh, to highlight one of the potential unintended consequences that might occur to that would be relevant to our uh, local region, which is around the uh, region's dependence on migrant labour supply and we want to be fully confident that the government understands that relationship uh, in terms of how to, housing, uh, housing supply and the opportunity to purchase housing. Thank you for that. Do we have questions from the councillors? Thank you, Councillor Matheson. Thank you, Mr Chair. Probably would be might be directed through to somebody else, but local government New Zealand haven't made a submission. Is there a reason for that? Uh, um, thank you for your question through the chair. Uh, I did speak to local government New Zealand and they, yes, they didn't make a submission. But it was really a matter of priority um, and it was over the Christmas break, so they had limited resourcing. Uh, Queenstown Lakes, as you know, made a submission which has um, been attached and Hauraki District Council also made a submission. Sorry, I've got a question. Dale, would you like to move that? I've also got a question here from... Okay, so Councillor Skinner, do you want to yeah, just quick, ask quick, a question? Quick question. Um, well written. So we basically are... Our um, reply to that was pretty much on the piggyback of Queenstown. Is that right? We've, we've got Queenstown's submission in here. Um, so we're basically giving their submission as 
it's completely 100% agreeable from our perspective. Is that correct? Through the chair, our submission was supporting their submission, but principally those three points that have been highlighted. So we've got another question, Councillor Courtney. Thank you, Mr Chair. Gabriel, thanks for your report. <coughs> Could you expand a little on 4.2.3 on page 16, where you talk about a key part of the regional labour market's um, role uh, there? You say the bill does not sufficiently acknowledge that overseas buyers also form part of the key, a key part of the region's la regional labour market. Um, I just wonder how you measure that. Thank you for your question. And through the chair, yes, this is really an invitation back up to government to make sure that they've measured that correctly so that that can be mitigated. You do you see a problem here with this year, for us particularly? Through the chair, I think the issue is more of a concern that if it may have, be, have an unintended consequence in terms of that particular labour market group that our district is dependent on. So, I mean, diff we're different than a, a big urban city in that we do, uh, some of our industry, our primary industry does rely on migrant labour and, and we just want to be confident that the government fully understands that impact before they pass this legislation. Okay. Uh, question from uh, Councillor McGurk. <laughs> Yeah, thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Thanks for your indulgence, because I'm not a member of the committee. This this hundred this this policy was signalled pretty well before the general election. It'd be fair to say that in terms of the the, the, the government, they certainly signalled that was the direction they were heading to. So, so it's not a complete surprise. <laughs> it's yeah, you know, it was signalled. So yes. Through the chair, um, you're right. The Labour Party, particularly, put out a suite of, of policy directive, but they didn't fill in any of the detail Not as that. to how they were going to implement that. that. And so, this is the first uh, opportunity that we've had to see some of that detail, and we're just wanting to make sure that okay. that the detail is actually fit for purpose to achieve the objectives that they sought. Oh, good. yeah. Well, thank you. Now, um, I see the the letter that's that's been sent by the Chief Executive, when, are we endorsing, it does make reference to it, to the Queenstown Lakes one, because I'm just wondering if the specific reasons why they haven't got time, that the, um, <coughs> they haven't had time to put in a detailed submission, or detailed, the timing of the uh, submission, and also the um, the impact on the, on Margaret uh, Margaret says, in terms of the, 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 the local employment opportunities, I suppose, is what I'm trying to say. So that's that's the nub of what your sum the submission to council uh, select committee process is. Sorry, I'm <laughs> yeah. uh, through the chair. Yes. Yeah, okay. in, in well, because sure. yeah, I was, I was just concerned if we're adopting whole as well as was looking at 3.2, 3.3, and 3.5. In the Queensland Lakes, you know, the quite distinct. You know, we talk about the luxury housing market and um, cutting off uh, avenues of philanthropy and things like that, which I didn't think was particularly relevant. So, just through the chair, just to clarify, we are say, in our submission, we were saying that we support principally those three components: 1.1, 1.3, 3.51. No further questions, Councillor McGurk. I thank you for your attendance and your question. And Councillor Walker, thank you for your attendance. Please feel free to join in. And I think I'm hearing now to Mia Rees. I think you had a... And then Mr. Councillor Skinner. Um, th <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chair. And I'm not sure whether this has been moved or seconded at the moment. Uh, at moved. the moment, I've got to move it, but I'm, I'm just held to, it. I'm happy to second oh, it. Oh, you're talking? And, and, and speak, speaking to it, I would say... Um, I think the... The analysis, and if you went to the um, regulatory impact statement and had a look at that in relation to this bill, it was um, extremely light in terms of evidence. Um, it was not a coherent argument, in fact, from um, as a reg regulatory impact statement, and I think that's quite telling that it has been pushed through um, in a. Um, 
poten potentially as, as a, um, a deal-making exercise. Um, that doesn't mean that there aren't good things in this bill, and I'm not saying that, you see, that, there's, that, that it's a bad thing, but it's not a good way to develop legislation, and the problem I have with that is that the receiver of poorly drafted legislation, rushed, rushed legislation, is often local government, because we end up at the coalface dealing with our communities and the impacts that are there. And I think, I, on this I was, it was understand that sometimes there are imperatives that are more important than the partnership with local government, but it isn't a good display of what we had anticipated. Um, I mean, if we did this to our community and went out um, with a um, poorly constructed um, explanation about what we were doing, throw it out right before Christmas to make decisions, we'd absolutely slaughtered and rightly so. So I, I do think it's you know, not an example of good practice. Uh, hopefully it won't be repeated. And hopefully the select committee process will address the issues that it needs to, because there are some very good submissions to that. I, I would say that it went quite a bit further than what was signalled in the election. And what was signalled in the election was a um, de desire to deal with speculation. And it was focused very much on um, the, North, the North Island, and particularly around Auckland, and um, we drew a circle around that, the impacts that are being had in that market. And we did see through that process some... Um, you know, we're talking about speculation, but there was also speculation in relation to um, some data around who was causing the problem, and you will recall that. Um, um, you know, you may have seen the story around um, addressing migrants, the impact of, of migrants on um, the housing market in Auckland being determined by somebody's surname. Well, that's... Um, um, for, for people that have lived here for several generations and happen to have a um, Chinese surname, that's somewhat... Um, Insulting would probably be the word. Um, so I think I think what the officers have done, they've been very focused, they've made that very clear, that we're supporting three points, and they've made that clear on what they're doing, and I think on that basis we should support it. I did have a discussion with the Chief Executive as to whether we should go and speak to this, and I think this again is a bit like local government New Zealand, where you've got to determine your priorities, where you can have most influence, and I think that in this case potentially there is... Um, if the, the, the mind is made up already, then the select committee process may not have much influence at all, but I think others have put in sufficiently robust submissions that if the select committee is minded to improve this legislation, then they've got the right information in front of them. What we haven't got is time to go and do the data analysis to actually demonstrate what the impacts would be for our region. And, and I would say, in terms of um, philanthropy, and the, and the contribution that people who have come to our region from overseas have made, it is significant. It is extremely significant. And I think you can think of probably people, some people that we were with earlier in the, in the week who have made a major, major contribution to this city, who have come from overseas, and philanthropy has been a big part of their contribution. Would, the, 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 the challenge with this is if it sends a message around the world that says actually we are, um, you know, we're actually not that interested in you coming to live in New Zealand, then I do have a concern that that, that seems to be counterintuitive with the investment category migrant scheme where we actually are trying to in attract investors into this country. Um, and that we know is actually quite important to our region. We think about some of the in innovation industries that we've got here and how actually they have benefited from that investor category migrant who's arrived into Nelson. Thank you. Um, my next speaker is uh, Councillor Skinner, followed by Councillor Neiman. Well, just a couple of, couple of questions, if able, and I'm happy to go into debate as well, if you so wish. If we don't, I see, I see we've got and understand the, the portions that we're supporting on Queenstown District Council. Are we, are we getting the signal that we will be heard? Are we getting the signal from government that we will be heard, that this is going to be consultation, it's going to be delayed? Till later, is that's probably through the, through the chair. Sorry, through the chair. I see the last line, well put by um, the CEO, is we wish to be heard in relation to this mission and we'll expand on our position at the time, which I wholeheartedly support. Are we going to get an opportunity to do that? Through the chair, the hearings were actually held last Wednesday on, and there was a decision made by the council not to uh, be represented at that time. I think Mayor Reese has just iterated why the reasons as to why. I understand that. Understand that. So what I'm saying is, if, if we don't support, if we don't support what's been put put forward, are we 
or even if we do support, are we going to be able to put our views? My concern is that we're quite different to Queenstown and I'm not supportive of Queenstown's reasoning. It's probably correct for them but not correct for us. So I don't support, at this point in time, I don't support um, the submission that we've got on the, on the back of Queenstown. What I'm asking is if we support it, are we going to get a chance to be heard? The answer to that would be no, you don't get the opportunity to be heard at that select committee. So Mr Chair, are we in, so I know there was a bit of debate and questions, are we in debate? Right, right so I think we're in questions, even I've got two, I think I've got, uh, so at the moment then I think your question counts is we've got a mover, yep. Councillor Noonan and a seconder, Mayor Rees, I think we can go into debate. You would like to start the debate? I'll, I'll start the rolling. Um, I understand the first the first two reasons very good. They were at a, we haven't had a chance to, it was over a period of time which we weren't able to consult over or ask questions over Christmas period, which is no good. And secondly, no, we, there is, uh, I totally concur with Rachel Reese that Mayor Reese that we, we got a, if it's going to be drafted, it needs to be drafted well and with right information. But no, I don't concur that three. Well, it's, for, it's about, we're talking about migrants and home building, and we had statistician or statistics New Zealand came to us a few months ago now, and you may recall we were talking about the number of people coming to New Zealand and our rise in population, and it was the fact that the amount of people coming in was a very small percentage of that were actually adding to the workforce. So there's two issues here, we're talking about housing and we're talking about people coming here to add to the workforce um, and, and give be a part of this community, which is great, but the crux of it of this is talking about purchasing from houses from, from not from migrants, but people from outside of New Zealand. And I think that's a very valid concern. And Queenstown is quite different to Nelson, and I know a lot of housing has been purchased in New Zealand with no intent of people moving here and being part of a workforce. As I brought up in the past, when I've gone around Street by street, I can count up to 100 houses which are just put on hold basically. Someone overseas has purchased them and they're basically wrapped up in glad wrap and, and not, so it's not adding to our concern about the workforce. And I'd just further iterate when it came from statistics on the number of people coming to New Zealand, there was a very small proportion, I had put a figure on something, it was about 20 or 30% was actually of a working workforce, the rest, rest weren't. So if, the fact that we are concerned that this may have a an effect that Queenstown has, and Queenstown is quite different, they have quite a different market for the housing. To New Zealand and to Nelson, we're talking about residential homes, people that are working here. I've seen it happen in Tarkika when you've got houses being purchased from overseas or out of region with no intent of people living and working there. It makes it very hard for the working community of Tarkika to be able to stay there and work. And that is my concern for Nelson, and Queenstown doesn't reflect Nelson. So I don't support us. Um, endorsing their submission at all. But I do endorse the fact that this has got to be done in a process that we can be consulted on and we can have the right information for us to make an open decision. But Queenstown, no, I don't support. So to, just to clarify, I've also asked the um, Chief Executive he wanted to reply because he wrote the initial letter and he didn't want to make a mention before. Just to clarify. Okay, in that case, we'll put the uh, motion. All those in favour? Aye. All those again? No. We move to page 33, which leads us into the policy review, appointment of directors and trustees for CCOs and CCTOs. Have a recommendation there. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Um, do you wish to speak on your report? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll take the report as read. I would just point out that um, 
we are required by the um, by the Act to, to have a policy. Um, there have been uh, relatively minor um, grammatical changes or one substantive change uh, that I've highlighted in my report. I'm happy to take questions on those. Questions from Councillors. Thank you, uh, Councillor Courtney. Thank you, Mr Chair. Through to Officer Ward. I need some clarity. I need to know, is this a joint uh, review? Is this um, carried out in tandem with the uh, TDC and ourselves? Um, so, so I'm sorry, I haven't made that particularly clear in the report through you, Mr Chair. Um, there are two separate policies, one f just for uh, Nelson City Council and one which is a joint policy which covers our joint CCOs. So a similar report with, um, with a similar policy um, will go up to the Joint uh, Shareholders Committee meeting in April. But this particular item in front of you today is just for Nelson City. Excuse me, Mr Chair, if I can just ask another question about that, because, um, Officer Ward, you say on page 34, 3.4, that the joint appointment of CCO, the joint appointment, you see, of CCOs and CCTOs policy will be reviewed um, at the Joint Shareholders Committee on the 17th of April 2018 to ensure consistency between the two policies. That's why I asked the question. So. I got an idea from your direction from your answer that there were two different policies. That is correct. There is two different policies, one which applies just to Nelson City uh, CCOs and one which applies to the jointly owned CCOs uh, between the two councils. Why, why are, excuse me, Mr Chair, but why are they different? What, what's, the, what's the difference between the two, if you could enlighten me there? Would you indulge me with that? Because uh, I have an, I have a little irritant. Uh, I know the difference, you see, and I'm, I'm trying to. I'm going to get there in a minute. But if you wouldn't mind, so there should be no difference between the two. Uh, we just um, it is. Now, a Tasman district has to have a policy of its own for its own uh, CCOs, um, rather than than having. Uh, trying to reconcile Tasman District's individual policy with our individual policy. Um, we have a joint policy which just covers the joint CCOs. And the recommendation to that committee meeting in, in April will be that, that the wording that we adopt today will be adopted for the joint committee um, policy. Well, that satisfies me to some extent. I hope that follows through. I want to refer you to 8.1 of your of the policy, page 41, where it says no staff member or elected member of council may be appointed as a director slash trustee except on a temporary role and where good reason exists to do so. Well, you see, I've noticed that the TDC have uh, a councillor on the Nelson Airport and also a councillor on the port company. Now. That will have to change, will it? So, through the chair, we can't enforce can, uh, council policy on Tasman District. We can we can recommend it, um, but we cannot force our, our own policy onto the Tasman District the council. They they have a, they have their own policy. All right. Well, just I'm going to finish now. But just to say, um, we're still going to that joint meeting, are we? And on the 18th, what is it of March? Is it March? Well, anyway, whenever it is, um, in the hope that uh, they'll adopt what we're saying, what we're putting here. Is that correct, or do you think there'll be an amendment? I thought they were, were in tandem. You told me. I, I would. I would be surprised if Tasman District changed its position on on appointees to um, of councillors, um, but we can certainly request that in, in, in relation because we believe that it is good practice. No, thank you, Councillor Courtney. I think uh, Councillor Noonan. Thank you. I'm happy to move with a minor amendment, and that is just a correction in the numbering. Um, you've got two eights. So on page 41, just subject to that being changed to nine for the variation of procedure. You can pay me some of the admin spoons later. Uh, before we go to a second, can I just ask a question of the staff there on um, 5.3 in leading, probably 5.1 leading to 5.3 where we have three consecutive terms, so three lots of three gives the person nine years and then they could get a possible 
um, three, three more, well, three lots of three more, nine, 18 years. Are you comfortable? That's a, um, shall I say, prudent um, for length of time for, for directors and trustees? So, so council always has the opportunity every three years to decide whether it w wishes to reappoint or not. What I'm suggesting, and, and it comes from some of the discussion that has taken place at the, at the various committee meetings in relation to appointments, is that where you have a board member who has been identified as, as, a, as a chair of the board, that it seems unfair to, to limit that person's um, term to the same term as just a, a, an ordinary board member. Um, for the sake of continuity, if if someone has spent, for example, two terms as a as a board member and then is uh, is appointed as chair, uh, it it seems not with uh, not not good practice to then say that that appointment had to end after just one term as chair. So it really was an attempt to, to bring continuity, recognising that where someone has been made chair, um, they, um, they should have some skills and talents and, and experience that is relevant to that board. And, and it may, there may be a value in keeping that on longer. So, but, uh, but I do say, uh, uh, reiterate, at any stage, when, when any reappointment comes up every three years, the council has, a, has the opportunity to say no. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Boyle. I just wanted to, uh, to register that discussion and thank you for your answer. Do we have any further discussion? Because I've got a mover here and Councillor Noonan. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Councillor Courtney. Discussion on that um, recommendation on the table? No further discussion. I'll move that. All in favour? Against? Carried. Okay, we move to exclusion of public. Thank you, Councillor Noonan, for excluding the public. Seconder? Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Skinner.